Rahim, Ahmadu Asalli Ala Rasul Karim. Today, uh, Dr. Umar, I want to uh, bring to you a, 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 a portion of the Quran in the very beginning of a surah called Surah Al Kahf, uh, which we know is the surah that's tied to the Antichrist and the coming uh, problems and tribulations we're going to have. In the very beginning, and the reason I ask this question is because of your book where you talk a lot about Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the book about uh, it's the it's this the one on Cain. I, I know uh, Cain, Cain's Creed. Yeah, Cain's Creed. Yeah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after mentioning Alhamdulillah Ladi Anzala Allah Abdi Kitabu Alam Yaja Allah Iwaja that Allah sent down his book in which there's no crookedness, Ayyamalyun the Rabat San Shadida, so that mm -hmm. he will warn you clearly of a terrible punishment that's coming. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after mentioning the believers, then the critique starts with walada, and those who say Allah has taken for himself a son. Mm. And you know, when generally when we think of the Antichrist, we think of the Jewish community. Yes. But the critique of Quran starts with Christianity. Yeah. They have no, no, no knowledge of what they say. Yeah. Nor their forefathers. Or mm -hmm. nor their father. Uh, mm -hmm. Very evil it is that they say from their mouth. They say not except a lie. I want, uh, I have uh, you know, thought about this. That why does this come in the beginning of this chapter? Uh, mm -hmm. Particularly in reference to end of times. Yeah. And generally, I've seen it as the crisis that came from the the, 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 the Christian Reformation, the creation uh -huh. of the Protestant movement, breaking away from the Catholic Church, and and then the, the, the intellectual renaissance that happened after that, and all the problems that have come as a result of that. But I want to know what you would think of that. How do you take oh, that? Oh, dear. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. May it please Allah subhanahu wa what Allah to grant us wisdom as we seek the truth. This is a, a complicated matter, but fortunately, Allah has allowed me to reduce it to an archetype. And what you are discussing, what you are asking, is what is this archetype? Why was this archetype so important that the Quran actually mentions it as a key to that opens the door to damnation is what you're talking about because this is the severe judgment is mm -hmm. it not of course it yes is. all right now first of all let us deal with this term son of God okay this is um, it has two references, and the first reference that was used in Al Torah always referred to a prophet. Okay, mm -hmm. now the prophet was not considered a son, a literal son of God. It's allegorical, mm -hmm. it's metaphorical. Okay, um, uh, so it doesn't mean a literal son. It means one who has been adopted by God as their representative. It, it, it is a term that really means Khalifa. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, because well. in those days, the prophet was uh, the king. Well, I'm talking about before the first king of the Israelites. Okay. Right. Now, I'm not talking about the before the first king of the pagans, but be, before the first king of the Israelites, before, the, before that occurred, before Prophet um, uh, Samuel mm -hmm. tore his hair out because they were asking for a king. The prophet was the leader. He was the caliph, and his title was son of God. Uh, now, the people did not call him son of God, although some did. But those who were knowledgeable in the scriptures, in the um, Gnosticism of the day, so to speak, 
they referred to him as the son of God, okay? And there were other creatures referred to as the sons of God, and mm. these were uh, beings who had gone before, probably angels who had come and gone and made themselves known in times past. We don't know the details of this history, okay? Mm. And when we're talking about history, we're talking about H-I-S, capitals, God's yeah. history, okay? God's history. So there are sons of God in the heavens. There's supposed to be some sort of council in which uh, even Iblis attends and accuses man, okay? Uh, now, the various of the prophets referred to this. The New Testament authors referred to this. All of this has been toyed with and tampered with. But if you're careful and you read through it systematically, you can pull out the core. And I have been gifted in a way uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have done this. Mm -hmm. So I have a pretty clear understanding of what took place. Now, there's, that's the one element of this title, Son of God. It is never literal, okay? Mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the pure uh, scriptural context, it is an honorific, an honorific, that's all it is, mm -hmm. okay? But the people who are not informed uh, these uh, dangerous, uh, 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 pious ignoramuses, they get a hold of this and they run with it and they start killing people because of it. Mm -hmm. see. And uh, this, is, this is dangerous. So in any case, uh, this is the scriptural aspect of that phrase, of that title. And it has been used repeatedly in that context, and over the centuries, it has been altered to a literal uh, ascription, a literal uh, translation, and uh, this was never meant to be, never, okay? But those who have corrupted the scriptures, they go along with it because it plays into their scheme. Mm -hmm. it it brings the people right into their hand, okay? Now, let's go to the other aspect of this title, Son of God. This has to do with the pagan culture. And the pagan culture ascribes many sons of God, okay? It doesn't matter which culture you look at. All of these idolaters had sons of God. They had incarnations of so and so and so and so, and many of them were named Krishna or something in that effect. This this title Jesus Krishna uh, begins somewhere in India and made it way made its way all the way to the Celts even before the mother uh, uh, even before uh, Isa was born. Hmm. Caesar Caesar himself Julius Caesar had already used this title. Jesus, mm. okay, as the son of God that was ascribed to the uh, uh, cult, uh, ascribed to the Celts in what has become uh, France, okay, mm. at the time. So this is not a new new title. It's nothing. It's nothing new. It's old. It's ancient. They call this uh, an avatar. And what they did is they took these men who were ascribed this title, ascribed this honorific in the pagan sense, and they made them kings, okay? Mm. So you had the priest king. This was the pagan ideal, to have a son of God, okay? A son of one of the gods. It doesn't matter which one. You <laughs> just choose a god. He had a son, okay? And he had daughters, too. And uh, usually the son would... Uh, be uh, uh, mothered by one of these daughters, and then he would marry him. This is where, where you marry her. It would come uh, into the, the Oedipal com complex that Freud made famous, and everybody has run with since. Uh, 
Mm. This is what happened to Alexander the Great, for example. His mother and he arranged for his father, Philip, to be killed, to mm. be murdered at the very ritual which was going to establish him as the son of God, King Philip. Mm. Right just as he was entered the emporium where this ritual was to take place, he was stabbed to death. Mm. And then his assassin was also killed on the spot. And then Alexander and his mother buried both men side by side in a holy ritual. Mm. And then Alexander went to Persia eventually, you know, chased uh, Darius out and uh, became the son of God. Darius was the son of God there, you see. Mm -hmm. So, or Cyrus, or whatever his name was. Anyway, Alexander then became a god himself. Mm. Caesar thought this was a great idea. Caesar worshipped Alexander, visited right. his grave, okay? And he then adopted, he was the first known Roman to adopt this title, son of God. He became a god. Mm. And um, when... Uh, this civil war occurred after the murder of Caesar. The Pompey, uh, who succeeded, became Caesar's son. He became then the reigning Roman son of God. <laughs> you mm. see? Mm. And um, he actually had 300 senators and consuls murdered, offered as human sacrifice on an altar to Caesar, the god. Mm. Okay, so this whole idea of the Son of God being uh, somebody significant was rampant all throughout the so-called civilized world at the time. Mm. All of the idolaters used this title, and they used Jesus. It's not a name. It's a mm. title. It means a point, and they used Jesus Christos. It means uh, uh, anointed Messiah, anointed Savior. So each one of these kings who eventually, you know, they're just pirates. They're just a bunch of pirates is all they were. And some pirates were more organized than another. <laughs> you see? And um, so the one who was most civilized was actually the best pirate. Mm. Okay? And that's why I called the book Cain's Creed. You mm. see? because this is what Cain did. And he organized the first pirate civilization back in India, mm. probably along the Hindustani, the Hindus River, where Pakistan now is, you see. Mm. This is where it all started. The mm. oldest uh, known civilizations are scattered along that river basin. And some of the digs, most of the archaeological digs have been interrupted from over 150 years ago. So the knowledge basis here is, you know, it, it's, it's full of holes, full of lacunae. But some of these civilizations, actually, it's, the old cities are in the sea. Mm -hmm. you see? And these cities go back to, we're talking 8,000, 9,000 BC. Mm -hmm. They had paved streets and indoor plumbing. You know, this was not a joke. Hmm. This was something that was very civilized and very organized. And in order to understand what I'm talking about here, this, this corruption of these titles and son of God, one has to understand the curse that was placed on Cain. And we discussed this before in one of our first interviews, but I think the, the, uh, uh, the audio... Uh, taping was, was very garbled on that. Mm -hmm. So if we have time, I can review that again. Otherwise, we'll just move on into how this son of God became Christian. <laughs> <laughs> However you like to do it, um, why don't we dabble into it a little bit, I think. It'll, okay. It, it won't hurt. We'll, 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 we'll try to, I'll try to review it quickly so we can get back to the Christians and how they were fooled. Um, Cain murdered his brother for religious reasons and out of jealousy because the best, uh, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best of what we produce belongs to Allah. And all of the Quran 
uh, throughout all of the Quran, the moral, the moral uh, I- import of the Quran and the, the moral um, uh, imperative is to do your best. Okay. Mm-hmm. And in order to do your best, one has to be, you, you have to acquire the attributions of, of Allah. Now, none of us can reflect these attributions perfectly. I mean, Allah is all-knowing, all, all everything, okay? Oh. But we can yeah. become knowing, okay? Mm-hmm. We can become uh, dutiful. We can become obedient to the divine order. All of these things we can do, okay? It's just a matter of the application of the will. And the reason we do this is to reflect Allah. This is what I meant when I said we are in Allah's image. Okay, Mm -hmm. if you look in the mirror, you you see something that looks like yourself, but that image is not you. That image not jump out of the mirror and uh, do what you can do. It's just a reflection. Okay, it Mm -hmm. has no life. But we, as uh, Allah's reflection, we have life, and we are ordered by the Quran to do our best. So, Kabil murdered Habil because Habil did his best. Mm. See? And then Allah visits Kabil and says, what did you do with your brother? Mm-hmm. The implication is not only what did you do, but why did you do it? <laughs> right. Yeah. And um, uh, so uh, look, the conversation goes on and, and Cain refuses uh, to perform Tauba. He refuses. Okay. He consciously refuses. And then Allah curses him. And the curse upon Cain is that, look, you've already lost my divine protection. You're not in Jana anymore. You're on this little prison planet called Earth. Okay. And the reason you're there is to prove your faith, to prove it by how? Doing your best. Okay. Mm-hmm. You Muslims, are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah. Please listen carefully. You are to do your very best. And you mm. start at home with your wife. Mm. <laughs> okay. I hope I brought that full circle. Now. Yes. Yes. No. So Cain refused to do this. So he's on prison planet. And this prison planet has some grace. Okay. Allah removed that grace from Cain. The earth is no longer going to produce for him. It's not going to respond to his hand. Cain was a farmer. Oh, my mm. God. <laughs> so that gives a problem to Cain. Okay, he can no longer the earth will not produce for him, so he's got to rob from people who make the earth produce. He became the first king of the pirates. He mm. launched this false religion. See, I say that because Allah said, I'm no longer going to talk to you. Okay. I'm no longer going to grant you inspiration. I'm no longer going to guide you. And he said in the Christian, in the Torah, it says sin is at the door. If you don't repent, then you will become ruler over sin. Mm. There is your archetype. Mm. Okay. It's right there. Very clear. So mm. Cain became the first pirate king who ruled over sin. Now, there is an uh, 18th century author who wrote a book called The Law. His name was Frederick uh, Bastiat. And he wrote The Law. And, uh, and The Law is all about legalized plunder. Okay. It's a little book. If you read it, you'll, he maps out the archetype right there. And we are now becoming absolutely subject to the final stages of establishing this legal system of plunder under Mm. Cain's creed. And Cain's creed always uses a messiah, always Mm. uses a false messiah, a false Jesus Christus, Mm. a false son of God, because Mm. after Cain was refused, the... Uh, uh, inspiration from Allah, the guidance of Allah, he only had to turn to Iblis. There's no other whisperer, you see. The angels don't whisper to him anymore, only the jinn. Mm. Mm. When Cain 
you know, this feature is still there. God didn't take the feature away. It's still there. And so there's still this element of the manliness that seeks solace in isolation in nature. Because why? Mm -hmm. In nature, we become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there's nothing between us and the creation then. Mm -hmm. You see, there's no buildings, there's no cars, there's no electricity, da da da. It's just you and Allah's creation. And mm -hmm. that creation reflects Allah, all of it. You see, so man goes into nature, ostensibly he says, oh, I'm going to hunt. But you know, what he's looking for is he's looking for the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's looking for his own courage. He's mm -hmm. looking for his own skill. He's mm -hmm. looking for his own best. Mm -hmm. See, this is what a man does when he goes out into nature. It's a challenge for him to do his best. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, the, the natives, you see, whom uh, 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 Prophet Muhammad told us to go live like, he didn't tell us to go and be them. He said, go live like them. He mm -hmm. said, he see, and this is the reason he said that, you see. And this is the reason you're considering, you know, the mountains and uh, living with the Native Americans right now, because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. There's the archetype. It's the opposite of Cain's system. Mm -hmm. Cain's system is the city. Mm -hmm. So you're right now, you're in the middle of the cane system. It's closing in on you. Uh, there, there's no room. <laughs> you, you can't express yourself. You can't really fully express your Petra. Your Petra, go, your people are going getting answered. Your women, women are going crazy. Everybody's going nuts. And it's because of this system. It's closing in on you. So... Cain had to, let's go back to Cain, Cain had to organize a false religion. Mm. Why? Well, you know, after you get old, it, it gets very tiresome to hack people to death just to put rice in your bowl uh, because the earth is uh, cursed and won't produce for you, so you have to keep on stealing. It's better to steal, it's easier to steal if you organize a system where people just bring their tithes to you rather than offer them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. So the principle is there, you see. I brought it full circle for you. And hopefully okay. this audio becomes very clear so that people understand the archetype. Mm -hmm. I don't go into details because if you go into details, you just get lost in them. You lose sight of the archetype. The details help you to see the forest, but most people are reductionist, you see, and right, they get right. lost in the details and then they form a specialty and then they form a language that describes that specialty and the archetype of <laughs> the forest is absolutely lost. So the, and then so the astrophysicist can no longer have a conversation with a nuclear physicist. Yes, uh, yes. even though they're both for them anymore, they can't they can't communicate with anybody, you see. Yeah. Uh, and so they don't they hang out with each other, you know, they, they can't go down to the local shishka shop and sit with the boys, you know, because no, there's nobody for them to talk to. You see, they've cut themselves off, as it were. So I try I reduce this in cane cream to an archetype. I give a lot of the details there. It's not an easy right, book right. to read. Right, right, but right. any case. I described there how this system was incorporated into what became the Catholic Church or the Christian movement, okay? First of all, there was no Christian movement. Uh, they were the, 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 the first disciples of uh, Isa, those who followed him, his Ummah, they were not Christians. Mm -hmm. They were never Christians. They never called themselves Christians. The closest term you can get is Ebionite, and this means the humble. Mm -hmm. And uh, people of Cain's system used to just call them paupers and, you know, dregs of the dreg. But these were the humble people who could be taught, and they were, they were taught to wait for Muhammad. Right. And blessings behind him. We, behind, uh, 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 about, uh, uh, upon him. We, I, I talked about this before, and I described this in my book, uh, the um, uh, on the Gospel of Barnabas, the Forgotten Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Now, 
what happened is, let's get back to the pagans and their sons of God messiahs. There were many sons of God messiahs, and they all had these mothers, you see. And these mothers were glorified, and they were called queens of heaven. Because they had married the father, then uh, the son and the mother somehow took vengeance upon the father because the father had a roving eye or had some kind of uh, other problem that they didn't like. And besides, mothers always tend to favor the sons over the father after a bit. This is a problem you ladies have, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's called disloyalty. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's a cause of your divorce. I'm, I'm going to tell you, it goes very, very deep, so be careful. Mm. Uh, you didn't marry your son. You married your husband. He's your caliph, not your son. Okay. This is a big problem, and it's one of the reasons mother-in-law, mother-in-laws become overbearing, because they stop listening to their husbands, and they try to manage their, their son's lives, mm-hmm. to favor the son too much. In any case, this mother of God was uh, endemic. It was everywhere in the pagan world. Everywhere you, every which way you turned, it doesn't matter, north, south, east, or west, there were mothers of God. The three goddesses outside of Mecca were subject to this, okay? Mm. One of them, Allah, represented the mother of God for Mm. the Syrians, Mm. in what was Assyria. So uh, this religion, this false religion, was everywhere, and Muhammad came to drive it out of the promised land, as I've discussed before. Well, after uh, Moriah... uh, So, so, So getting rid of idols wasn't just about getting rid of idols only. It no. was about getting rid of the false archetypes or the false yes. manifestations that those idols yes. represented. Yeah, uh, which I think is something that we haven't really looked into in terms no. of what idols they were, what were the archetypes they were supposed to represent, mm. and you know, uh, just that would be an interesting study. Um, okay, so yes. So, what happened was that. Slowly but surely, this mother of God and this son of God system that was established by Cain way back when and then was brought west, okay, first in Sumer, in Akkad, and then up into Babylonia, and then into Anatolia, and it spread all over the world in every direction from there. Um, this system was brought back into service. It, it's the system of the king. And when you think of the king, you think of the pirate king. Throw out this Lord of the Rings idea. There, was, there are very, very few chivalrous kings. Okay? The whole system is wrong. Okay? And we, in order to understand that, you have to go back to Prophet Samuel. And Prophet Samuel was wringing his hair. And it's interesting totally. you mentioned King with being pirate because in Sutul Kahf, the same chapter that I was just talking about earlier, yeah. mentions about how Khidr says, you know, he, they're on a boat and he, he uh, puts a hole in the boat. And then when he gives the explanation, it's because there is a king, meaning a pirate, yeah. yes. right, <laughs> who's going to take your boat, was going to take the boat, but in order yeah. for Allah's blessing not allow that, he put a small hole there for the time being. Yeah, yes. Yeah. This is, this, is, this is it, you see. And so those who, you have to be appointed to fight this system. You have to be appointed, you have to be organized, you have to be under the correct uh, divine order. You, you know, it, it could be done, but you have to anoint, you have to anoint and appoint a khalifa, and this khalifa has to be uh, uh, spot on, with his spirituality and with its uh, manifestation in the deen. And then the men around him, they have to form a circle of defense, okay? They can't leave his back open so somebody can stab him in the back while he's at prayer, Mm. okay? That's what happened. Right, that's what happened, yeah. That's what happened because they were not informed. 
and they were not vigilant, they were not doing their best. Mm. Okay? This is why Islam fell and is still falling, because mm. the men are not doing their best. And when men don't, doing, don't do their best, the women get antsy. Mm. Okay? If you have a man who's doing his best, and he stands on that manhood, the women will not bother him. Mm. I guarantee you. They will serve him, they will service him, and they will see that nobody troubles him. Mm. Okay? That's what a real matriarch does. Mm. It's one of her jobs. This is not being done in the Ummah. It hasn't mm. been done for a very long time. Mm. This is the archetype. Mm. Okay. That's why I speak in archetypes, because it does away with all the psychological nonsense. I prefer to use another word, but I'm being polite. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> now, uh, so the Christians were not Christians. We can get back there. They were the disciples, the Uma of uh, Yehoshua, who was the son of Mary or Miriam, as we know him and, and as we know her. She was never a queen of heaven. And however this incarnation happened, we don't know. We really don't know the particulars. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this, however. We have seen in the laboratory, and I don't know what they're doing now genetically. Uh, I can't keep up with all the literature. But we have seen in my day, in my, when I studied medicine, 40 years ago now, they could take an ovum from a woman, prick it with a pin, no seed, just a microscopic pin, and that ovum would begin to multiply hmm. on its own. Okay. Now, it would not form a human being, but the principle is there. It, it just requires some sort of prick. Hmm. You, all right. And so whatever Allah Subhanahu did, we know it was a new creation, almost new, because we also know from, uh, I think it's in the Quran, that uh, Allah said that uh, Isa is like unto uh, Adam. Yes. Okay. So they're similar. They're, they're new creations. Mm -hmm. And Allah can do whatever he wills. Mm -hmm. Okay. We know this as well. Because he has control over all things. So if you want to entertain that mystery and get on the pagan side of it, you'll get lost for sure. <laughs> because it's beyond our comprehension. And that's the truth of it. So I've left that alone. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I've studied the scriptures and the completion of the scripture is the Quran. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very, very clear that it is a miracle. It does. It explains some things. It does not explain everything, mm -hmm. and there's a reason for that because some things are not explained so that our test, our faith, can be further tested. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> so those of us who look deeper into these things, the deeper we look, the the more our faith is tested. Is it not? Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And the more you look into science. The more you see the scripture and the uh, dunya coming together, but at the same time, the more confounded you become because it's incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. We can't, we cannot comprehend. Look, look at the size of the universe, for God's sake. Yeah. Who can, who can comprehend this? Nobody can comprehend it. You can, you, you, you need a computer to, to tap out the numbers. You don't have enough strength in your arm to write out the zeros. Mm -hmm. when, you're when you're considering the light years and the mm -hmm. seven heavens, da 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 da. It, 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 no, I, it's, we, so our test is, our faith is tested. And this whole process of the sons of God in the system of Cain versus the scriptural uh, sons who were the obedient ones, okay, and that was just an honorific, uh, no wonder the Muslims. Uh, want to run away from this term mm. because they don't understand it mm -hmm. and it's easily manipulated. Okay, mm. 
It's e- because it, it, it begins with the avatar of the ancient Hindus. Mm. That's where it begins. And these ancient Hindus, I'm sure, were under the, 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 the auspices, under the thumb, if you will, of Kabil, mm. who organized the first organized religion. Because before this Dravidian system was developed, uh, there was no organized uh, religion. You, you had cannibals. You had cannibals. Mm. The pre-Dravidians were cannibals. They were headhunters. Mm. And they would, you know, hunt their enemy and uh, uh, take his head, uh, go home. Uh, they wouldn't take the whole body. It was too, too much to carry. So they'd just take the head. They'd go home, have their wife prepare it. But the wife could not eat the meat. Mm. She had to cook it, you see, and prepare it for him. And then he would uh, eat it. And uh, especially he would save the tongue because the tongue would tell, he'd hang it, dry it in the sun, hang it around his uh, neck because uh, the tongue would lead him to his next, next uh, victory, you mm. see, as a pirate, <laughs> as, the, as the proto-pirate, you see. And then he would take the skull, slice the skull cap off, and you you use it to drink. This is where the kippah comes from. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's used in human sacrifice still to this day. And you, you see these portraits, these medieval portraits and later of the, the holy man standing with the skull, you see. <laughs> this, mm. this is what we're talking about, because they would imbibe the spirit of their enemy, you see, and then take pride in the in this victory well when kabil got saw that and uh, the whispers started working with him he said hey you can use this system you can use this and so that's what they did and then they also brought in he incorporated human sacrifice into this system okay and so that everybody's you know they go to the altar there's a human sacrifice and then everybody's relieved because it's not them you see mm-hmm. So the Christians are relieved because they don't have to suffer. Jesus already did that, you see, it's right. not him. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, you dear Christians, but you've been fooled. I was one of you at one time, and uh, the history of this tomfoolery is there if you want to look at it, but your priests do not want you to look at it. And mm. they are under the thumb of the Jesuits, and they are Jews, and they don't want you to look at it either, you see, because their whole system comes crumbling down. And this is what the Sura speaks of, is it not? Yeah. When that system comes crumbling down, you're off to hell. And Jesus, there's a scripture there that says, that Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you because you never knew me. Mm-hmm. You never knew who I really was. Mm. You attributed to me this pagan idolatry and you attribute it to my mother as well right okay no 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 i don't care how many rosary beads (laughs) you you pray it doesn't matter this is not acceptable okay so this system became christianity after a series of Mm, how shall we say, charlatans like Caesar becoming God. You see, Pompey became God. And then when Titus uh, destroyed uh, Rome, his father Vespasian became God and son of God. And Josephus, who was a general defending Jerusalem, he surrendered and he said, look, you are the promised Messiah. (laughs) You are the son of God. (laughs) <laughs> Look what this cunning Jew did. And now he's famous as a historian. Yeah, yeah. he's famous as a historian, yeah. Yes. But look what he did, you see. And then they ascribed, they, they, they brought from Alexander, the Al- Alexandria, the Alexanders, another family, okay? And this family, a hundred years previously, had produced a philosopher's son named Philo. And Philo had, had discussed this whole concept, trying to explain to the Greeks the concept of the Son of God, you see. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they used his writings, and they used it, the Romans used it with Josephus and the Alexandrians, and 
the priest of Serapis, who was uh, 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 an Egyptian messiah, okay, who was considered the son, son of God, they used this and they put it together as an accretion and they stole all of the original scriptures. The last copy of the original Altarot uh, was in the temple that Titus destroyed. Josephus handed it to Titus. All other copies were destroyed. Mm. See? So that was the only one they had. And then uh, the priest of Serapis got together with the Vespasian, with Titus and Josephus and the Alexandrians. And they said, okay, we need a new religion here. We have uh, Vespasian. He's God the Father. We have Titus. He's God the Son. And they incorporated the whole gospel and wrote it so that um, uh, and they took bits and pieces and bits and pieces of this, that, and the next one. And they left only the Greek copies, okay? Mm. We know that the disciples of Isa wrote in Aramaic. Mm. Those copies are not available. There's fragments in the odd oriental church, okay? In you know of the Armenians or someplace like that, they're hidden away. Almost nobody knows about them. But if you read those gospels, there's no resurrection, there's no crucifixion, there's no ascension. It's not there. Mm. And if you read the very first copy of the complete uh, Bible, there's also no mention of these things. Okay. It's not there. So all of these things were added later, and. When, for example, when um, one of the Roman emperors went to, um, uh, I forget which one now, when one of the Roman emperors went to visit Egypt, he wrote back to one of the senators, he said, well, these Egyptians are rather impressive. They had this new religion, and uh, they, they swear upon uh, Serapis, and they call him Jesus Christus, you see. Mm. They, they call themselves Christians. <laughs> mm. You see, and this Serapis character, he, he was one of the, uh, anyway, he was another one of these pagan sons of God, another avatar, another avatar, another messiah. They come cyclically. Uh, some people who have, who have scholars have looked into these systems and they find a cyclical occurrence of these messiahs. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, was so, it was so prevalent, so important to the verification of the Roman emperors or whoever the king was to to confirm his uh, destiny as a son of God, that they actually modified the history so that it, the ascension, advent of each of these kings would fit this ancient Indian uh, uh, calendar, you see. So all of this came into Christianity. Christianity is an accretion. It's an accretion. It's a collection of all of the ancient religions, and that's what Rome did. And right. it was one of Rome's downfalls, you see. So this whole system, this whole system is the system of Cain's creed. Mm -hmm. That's why that's I wrote right. the book. I get, I get it. No. I don't want to push my luck yes. too much. Oh, so, okay. Want to end know, here? Yeah, I think uh, do you, uh, maybe uh, another two, three minutes because um, my lights keep going off. Electricity. Oh, oh, I, I don't want to record something for 40 minutes only to lose it. I want to oh, rather play on the safer side. <laughs> yeah, well, then you better stay this, save this and we can do it again. We okay. can go forward from here and uh, let your let your listeners uh, ask questions. Um because I'm sure this is going to stimulate uh, many, many questions. And <clears throat> I've already answered many that people don't even know they had, you see. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's part of the confusion. I mean, when you can't identify the question, you're really confused. That's, <laughs> that's, there's a, there's a that's saying of the Prophet, Husnu uh, Sawad <laughs> Nifsul uh, Ilm. A good question is half the knowledge. Yes. And yes. one of the great uh, uh, exegesis of uh, Quranic exegesis, Imam Razi, ah. his style is that he asks a lot of questions mm -hmm. and half of them he doesn't answer even. 
Uh-huh. He'll just ask the question and then go on to the next question. <laughs> like, Sometimes just... you ask a question. Sometimes I pose a question hoping that one of my students will take it up during their lifetime, you see. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's good. Okay, then we'll just end here. You you save this what we've done and we'll, we'll take it on again tomorrow or the next day. Up to you. Inshallah. Okay, very good. Wa alaikum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.